So that's what the media does. It knows full well what Parliament is up to and it knows the amount of corruption and corrupt persons in Parliament. And if they were to release it, as we say, they would be shut down overnight. So they don't they just drip feed it. And only after a given time. You see, when we see Keith Vaz, say in a two, three months, he'll have gone. He'll have disappeared. He may still be in Parliament, but what he was up to has disappeared. And then somebody else will be fed out. This is the same with child buggers. He can't have the likes of Syl Smith revealed whilst he's alive. Leon Britton whilst he's alive. And there are some, like Jenna, whom they <laughs> we all know what happened there. They couldn't stop that one from coming out. But the only thing they could do is to claim that he was senile and couldn't therefore stand for trial. But the old boy down the pig in the road there, who may be senile, he can stand for trial. <laughs> oh, they do play a game with us. What a wondrous web they weave when first they practice to deceive, looking after their own. And so we have a man here aiding and abetting the distribution of illegal drugs and pushing male prostitutes and having what was it three male prostitutes from Eastern Europe hmm unprotected sex how vile we're talking now of a Minister of State if your blogs down the road Wants to go with male prostitutes. It's his business. His business. He's not in a high office. He does not affect the way the country is being run. You cannot have a Minister of State such as Keith Vaz in a position of power who has no morals, no ethics, and is buggering around with male prostitutes. You can't have it. You can't have that. Not in high office. Not governing a people. A person in high office must be upright in his life, in her life. Not corrupt. Joe Bloggs down the road can be corrupt as corrupt as can be, as long as it doesn't break the pig in law. But not in my office. There is a complete distinction. Let me say this to those who are slow of hearing. Would you, if you are working in a paper mill, employ an arsonist, would you? Of course you would. I wouldn't. <laughs> eh? Would you? Of course you wouldn't. Would you therefore employ a corrupt person in a high office that is potentially making the rules and regulations for others to follow? Don't be so sodding stupid. There is a hell of a difference between these boys who are supposed to rule with morals and ethics for the good of the country. You can't have persons like this running the country rather making the rules and regulations. I mean, he was into what? Prostitution laws? And he was piggy. Oh, he was involved. It's like saying to the police, go and regulate yourself. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> hey, Joe, what are you doing? Oh, I just hit an old lady over there accidentally. Ah, uh, rock on, baby. We'll have an investigation. You'll be cleared. Hey? <laughs> it's crazy. Huh? Dear me. Now, I go Jeremy Corbyn. Bye, yet Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> Where's Aunt Sally? He says it's a private matter. 
This is the leader of the labor party. It's the private matter. In other words, ooh. Where's your morals, Mr. Corbyn? Eh? Aren't you outraged? No, I've got no morals, he's basically saying. No morals, no ethics, no bugger all. No moral compass. The only moral compass they've got in Parliament is the one that they make for themselves and it twists this way and it twists that way and twists every other buggering way to suit themselves. Hmm? And Corbyn says, oh, he's, he's, he's not um, committed any um, crime as far as I know. Well, you'd better pick him his eye as the Prime Minister. Well, potential Prime Minister, hadn't you? Because if you don't know that he hasn't committed a crime in aiding and abetting drug dealing, I don't know what is. <laughs> oh my goodness. And where are your morals? He's broken every morals law. That man. Has. In the beginning. Some of course get rid of it like this man. He's got no morals. No ethics. No conscience. No bug at all. Anything is open to him. Anything. And we keep coming back to this. Anything is open. He doesn't bat an eyelid over what he's done. If you've got morals and ethics, you've got a conscience. If you've got none, you haven't got a conscience. He can try and swindle the treasury. He can support people who are criminals in his past. And then play the race card. Oh, you can't say this against me because I support this terrorist. <laughs> Because you're racist if you do. <laughs> he is just one walking abomination amongst the rest of the abominations. I mean, it comes to a summit, doesn't it? Eh? Well, it comes to a close. But it comes to a summit. When your own Prime Minister, Edward Teeth, as we used to call him, Booker's children, the leader of your own country and of the United Kingdom, buggers children. And not only that, knows that they are murdered afterwards. Hmm? And we're not going to even get, get into Madge, or Blanche as we call her, in the palace. And her husband, twit, and her son, pig and ape, ape anger, ears, <laughs> ears like pig and apes. Ugh. This is how it is in the UK, and they all put a smile on, all put a nice, nice, false face on. I wonder who shall next be released by the media hmm John Major maybe ah well you gotta wait till he's dead aren't you and Curry Edwina Curry go wait till she's dead and then see what comes out hey who's this hmm his daughter maybe I don't know he's got two children and probably and hopefully and deservedly and one can only hope that he's got AIDS. That's what he deserves. Just like Hitler deserved a bullet between his ears. Mussolini deserved a bullet between his ears. Muss What's his name? Stalin also. Hmm? And Peter Sutcliffe. And Myra Hindley. Hey? Eh? All needed a bullet between their pig and ears. These evil people and more do not deserve to breathe our air. They don't. They put themselves beyond the pale. And let people excuse them and excuse them and excuse them. You cannot bring them back to our side 
They've gone beyond. They've gone and crossed the Rubicon with Caesar. They're not coming back. You can't get them back. They've chosen to do what they've chosen to do for selfish ends. And they have no conscience. They've sold that. They've sold out to the sold the morals and they've sold the ethics. And you cannot trust them in anything. Everything and anything is open to them. So if any person turned around tomorrow and said that this boy over here had gone and stabbed somebody and was getting away with it, so. Or he buggered a child, so? There's no limit to the man. He can do anything. And he believes he can do anything. So he does what he seeks to get away with. These are different people than we are. We need to grow up. They, man. They are a complete society within themselves. You see the clothes that he wears? And he wears, and he wears, and him, and her. Who's paid for that? And we're talking now, not off the pigging peg, neither. These are tailor-made suits. We the taxpayer. You go into office, you go into Parliament, you go up the greasy pole, and as you're going up the greasy pole, you say, I must have this clothes, I must have that clothes, I must have these shoes, 300, 500 pound worth of shoes. And it goes to the taxpayer, because to them, it's part and parcel of their role as an MP. You must be dressed smart, therefore it costs. <laughs> and it's the same with the pig in hotels. Don't get a bed and breakfast, Go into high, you know, a hotel, 120 a night, just for the bed. Then there's a meal, then there's the cigars, then there's the booze. Then there's the tips. And of course, if you go down to Boris Johnson that time, didn't he? He, he bought that pig in wreath for the cenotaph and then claimed, claimed it back, the money, on expenses. This is how they are. And this one here. On an MP's wage, has a mansion and houses. Four million pound property plus houses on an MP's wage? Where's he getting the money from? <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? I wonder if he will continue in Parliament. Do you know, he never, you know, when he was ousted, he said he would make up his decision, his mind, whether or not to um, step down from the, this particular office uh, that was a committee to do with uh, prostitution. I will consider it. <laughs> That's the face of the bugger. <laughs> I will consider it. I wouldn't spend a bullet on you. <laughs> Hard. Hard faces. The type of persons you'd never find in a post office queue or in a local council queue paying the taxes. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well. Let's see who comes out next. And I wouldn't want to buy a washing machine off him full of poppers or, or coke. <laughs> I wonder if he was asking for Coca-Cola or Coke. <laughs> oh, well. Bye-bye.